Howdy everyone, I'm your host Andy from Zelda. Do you remember those weird bouncing gossip stones from Ocarina of Time? Yes, those ones. While playing the game, most of us likely just saw them as a goofy gameplay mechanic for learning secrets without giving them much thought regarding their origin or actual purpose. But in this video, we'll discover that the gossip stones could have a terrifying role in Hyrule's dark and mysterious history. Yet before I go ahead and tell you my theory, we need to understand that these stones are only part of a much larger plot, so we'll need to start by discussing their creators, the Sheikah. The Sheikah are a mysterious tribe dating back to the era of myth. Even in ancient history, the Sheikah demonstrated proficiency in martial arts and magical abilities. Due to this, the goddess Hylia selected the Sheikah to be guardians, defending her reincarnated mortal form at all costs. And since the reincarnated Hylia, otherwise known as Zelda in Skyward Sword, is said to have been an ancestor to the royal family of Hyrule, the Sheikah continued to guard and serve the royal family through the ages. According to the records, there was a long era of supposed peace known as the Era of Prosperity, following the Interloper War up into the Hyrulean Civil War. Maybe it's just me, but this doesn't seem like the complete truth. Sometime during this era, the Sheikah had taken enemies of the royal family to a structure known as the Shadow Temple to be interrogated, tortured, or horrifically executed. The Shadow Temple and other connected catacombs are remnants of a buried bloody history of greed and hatred within the Kingdom of Hyrule. Its chambers have blood and viscera spattered across its walls and floors, and are filled with devices of torture that clearly had been used on countless victims during its time of use. Since being decommissioned, the corridors are filled with many horrific carnivorous creatures attempting to consume anyone daring or unfortunate enough to have entered. Dark magic is used to anthropomorphize shadow, something which should not have a will of its own, into an unyielding force that actively seeks to disorient its prisoners and lure them to a gruesome death. Even the so-called artwork is designed to induce terror. Many portray a demonic face appearing amused as if entertained by someone entering its chambers and the dreadful fate awaiting them. At this point, you may be thinking, Andy, you already told us that Hyrule has the recorded long era of peace and prosperity, so it doesn't make any sense that the Shadow Temple would be used in this time. Well, I agree that these two pieces of history don't fit together, but we can be confident that the Shadow Temple was indeed used in this time frame since page 44 of the Zelda Encyclopedia states that its horrific purpose was given by Hyrule's royal family and the Sheikah, meaning it must have been used sometime after the formation of the royal family and obviously been decommissioned and hidden before the events of Ocarina of Time. So if we're confident about this, why would records portray Hyrule as peaceful and prosperous during this time? Well, history is by its own nature a one-sided account meaning that the leadership of Hyrule likely rewrote their own history in an attempt to conceal their inhumanity. It seems rather unsettling that the royal family and the Sheikah, whom we usually perceive as protagonists or good guys in the franchise, be guilty of such violence. This naturally leads us to ask why Hyrule and the Sheikah created such a morbid place as the Shadow Temple instead of a more humane way to deal with enemies. I have two independent theories to explain this, each being analogous to thought-provoking novels. This first theory is inspired by some ideas expressed in the Shadow Temple article on the Architecture of Zelda website. I highly recommend checking out their full article after finishing this video, so I'll put a link to their site in the description below. Due to the Curse of Demise, dark forces relentlessly seek to bring Hyrule and the descendants of Hylia to ruin. Basically, the presence of evil is like a law of nature. If it is vanquished by the light, it will manifest itself time and time again, for shadow and light are two sides of the same coin one cannot exist without the other. Due to this concept, the Shadow Temple may have been constructed by the Sheikah to concentrate all the evil and darkness in the world within one malign structure, but in order to keep the balance of nature, this dungeon must contain an evil equivalent to the malevolence and darkness that would otherwise roam the entire land. This idea is evocative of a short story titled The Ones Who Walked Away from Amalus, where Amalus is a seemingly utopian city where everyone is prosperous and lives in harmony. However, for the city to maintain its constant state of serenity and splendor, an innocent child must be imprisoned within perpetual darkness, filth, and suffering. When each citizen reaches maturity, they are taken to witness the child living in indescribable misery, enabling their way of life. 
The majority of citizens tolerate this one atrocity and continue to live in Amalus, justifying this through the utilitarian philosophy, which favors the greatest good for the greatest number. But of course, some decide for themselves that they cannot be part of a system that relies on the immeasurable misery of a human being, regardless of the benefits, and abandon Amalus entirely. Hopefully, the connections to the story were clear. While aiming to achieve a utopian-like society like Amalus, Hyrule can find all misery and darkness, creating the subterranean labyrinth of horrors that would become known as the Shadow Temple. With this theory, there may have been a long era of prosperity for Hyrule. The catacombs within the temple describe how its structure is the gathering of Hyrule's bloody history of greed and hatred. Perhaps here, the term greed is in reference to Hyrule's applied utilitarianism, gaining prosperity for the entire kingdom at the expense of those deemed to be their enemy. Likewise, the term hatred is about the cruelty inflicted upon those unfortunate enough to end up in the temple and their torment being kept secret from public knowledge. Perhaps the Shadow Temple is misjudged. After all, utilitarianism is still one of the most credited types of ethical philosophies in the modern world, though applying it to this situation with the Shadow Temple is very extreme and entirely unrealistic. Fortunately for us, the second theory is a bit more grounded, and yes, this one does involve the Gossip Stones. I swear I haven't forgot about them. If we again refer to page 44 of the Zelda Encyclopedia, we'll find an unsettling block of text which reads, The existence of the Sheikah is typically a secret to all but members of the royal family and those close to them. The tribe best fulfills its duty when acting in secret, as shadows of Hyrule. In eras of war, they are essential agents of the royal family, handling all manner of duties, from combat to intelligence gathering. No matter how dark or perilous the task, they will do what is necessary to keep the kingdom from harm. We already know that the Sheikah tend to act in secret, excel in combat, and loyally serve the royal family. But what's concerning is this part about gathering intelligence, especially followed by the line, they will do whatever is necessary to keep the kingdom from harm. If this only occurs in times of war, as this quote claims, there wouldn't be much to worry about. But can you think of a time, either in fiction or the real world, when a government decided on its own to stop surveillance and gathering intelligence? After all, if the Sheikah had a way to eradicate any threats to Hyrule before they ever had the chance to do harm, who was going to stop them from doing so? This is where the Gossip Stones come into play. These strange statues are scattered all across the corners of Hyrule. Marked with the Eye of the Sheikah, they are confirmed to see everything that occurs within their vicinity, and are proficient at gaining information from those they observe. They also have a clear connection with another mysterious Sheikah artifact, the Mask of Truth, which enables the wearer to hear the true thoughts of others and listen to rumors from the Gossip Stones. This means that the Sheikah had found a way to use their shadow magic and or technology to read people's minds and spy on their innermost thoughts and desires. Based on this knowledge, it's possible that the so-called Era of Prosperity was actually a point in time where Hyrule's leadership was analogous to the one depicted in George Orwell's novel, 1984. While the ones who walked away from Amalus from the previous theory featured a utopian society with one morbid flaw, 1984 features an entirely dystopian society. In this story, there exists omnipresent surveillance which nobody can seem to escape. History is rewritten to match the narrative of Big Brother's totalitarian regime, and all evidence of the truth is destroyed. And making this matter somehow even worse, this entity employs a force known as the Thought Police, who use covert surveillance to persecute those found guilty of independent thinking. Even a single thought could have a person deemed an enemy to society, for which they could be interrogated, tortured, and brainwashed to fit back into the regime or be executed with all evidence of their existence wiped from the face of the earth. This unjust arrest and cruel treatment of prisoners is precisely what happened within the Shadow Temple. Based on the sheer amount of blood, bones, and other human remains found within, it's clear that torture and carnage occurred frequently. It's said that enemies of the royal family were taken there, but it's never made clear what convictions were made for someone to be considered an enemy of the kingdom and be sentenced to such a bloody fate. Perhaps the Sheikah took no chances and established a network of gossip stones, capable of covertly looking into the minds of everyone and everything that passes by, and reporting back to the Shadow Folk. 
If anyone had even a single thought about acting against Hyrule, the Sheikah would have been able to swiftly drag them down into the shadow, leaving the only evidence they ever existed as decoration within the most morbid location to ever exist within Hyrule. Which of these two theories did you enjoy more? I'd love to read your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel as any support goes a long way. Thank you all for watching, seldom out.